Hey, Bree here from the Treehouse. Uh, today, actually, I just wanted to start a, a small uh, series of pieces on my experiences um, in terms of uh, prejudices that are um, going on in this world and then that I have personally experienced um, during my lifetime. Uh, the, the first one actually has to do with um, not so much uh, prejudices as how to handle a police matter. Years ago, back in the early 90s, I applied for a position with the police department at the Chesterfield County, Virginia Police Department. And I remember at that time I was a, a bit more girly girl and uh, I had passed the physical though in the written and I walked into the police chief's uh, office for my one-on-one -on -one interview with him. And the first thing that he said to me was, have you ever even held a gun? And he proceeded to ask me various questions in terms of how I would handle um, different scenarios. And my response to him was pretty much that I would do whatever I needed to do to de-escalate that situation in terms of trying to communicate with that individual um, in hopes that we could resolve things peacefully. Well, unfortunately, or fortunately, I did not get the position. And I walked away feeling like, darn, you know, I, I answered it wrong. And for years I thought, um, you know, if only I had um, answered that question differently. Although I answered in, in all honesty. Um, in light of everything that is going on now, and I see the, the way um, the police have um, too often mismanaged the situation, there came a real peace about me about that, you know, I really can't answer that honestly and, and, and I would have made a good police officer. I um, had recently been teaching as a substitute teacher and I had an incident where a student attack, attacked me physically and I was really pretty seriously injured. Um, and my first response was to do whatever I needed to do to de-escalate that situation, to get out of it. I didn't attack back. And so I thought, you know, not only did I say what I thought in words to that police chief, but I actually put that in action. And I've had, unfortunately, numerous incidents where I've had students try to incite violence and my first response is to really do whatever I needed to do to de-escalate that situation. That being said, you know, I understand because inside of me, when, when that's going on, it, that's a tough moment and you have those, you know, natural feelings of you're, you're frustrated and how dare somebody, you know, put their hands on you or threaten to put their hands on you. But you've just got to take the, the high road and, and do what you need to do because your position mandates that, at, whether it be as a police officer or as it be as a teacher, you're in a, in a position to serve others, you have to do what is necessary to de-escalate that situation. Now, I think that police officers often, they're working extra hours, they're working two jobs or whatever to try to make ends meet and so are teachers. And it would be nice if we um, could make it so that they have time off so that that burnout doesn't take place. I've, I've heard teachers, you know, that their outlook on teaching, um, you know, has changed and, and, you know, I feel sometimes it's, it's due to, to burnout and that needs to be resolved so that they have that downtime so that that just doesn't turn to that just horrible, horrible situation. So, and in terms of prejudices, now is a time to really look in the mirror and, and take a real good look at yourself and, you know, own your own stuff. And, you know, I've always said that we, we can no longer change when we're dead, when we're in the ground or when we're, as I want to be, cremated. That's when we no longer have a choice to make a change to move in a better direction. And hopefully now all of this will um, inspire individuals to take a real look at yourself and do whatever is necessary to, to move in, in a better direction, to take a higher road. Um, 
I love one of the things that my daughter says, I have biracial children, and that she said, it's, she's, and I love this, she said, I don't want someone to look at me and say, I love you in spite of your color. I want someone to look at me and say, I love all of you, including the color of your skin. And that's the way we need to look at someone is to love all of them, not to say, well, I'm making an exception for you. Um, and so again, just, you know, this is a time of real reflection and to, to actively do what we need to do to make changes, to better ourselves and better this world. Hope you have a great weekend. Bye.